Hey, everybody. How you doing? <laughs> Welcome to the lounge. It's a Monday, and you're here, and we've got a special guest. This is going to be a good one. I'm Walt from 101 WKQX. Thanks for coming out to the lounge today. Sponsored by Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Are you ready? Yeah. All right, let's, let's give a Monday welcome to Billie Eilish. <laughs> welcome. Uh, who said that? I'm over here. Oh, hey. Hey. <laughs> how good are to, you Good guys? to see you. So I got to know, how... Did, how do you sleep after a show like last night? Did anybody go to the show last night? Woo! Yeah. I, it was, <laughs> one person. One cool. person. <laughs> I mean, the adrenaline, it's got to still be pumping because... Oh, yeah. The crowd, I haven't seen a crowd like that, that intense at the Metro for ages. Really? Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. No, yeah. yeah, it's like, it's wild. It's like, it's like a high. Um, yeah, especially when it's like the crowd is like insane. People are passing out and stuff. It's like I heard it's wild. people were actually passing out. And you had to kind of stop to. Yeah, there's like pretty much every show like six people pass out, if not more. <laughs> I, I mean, the, they the, go hard, so it's good. So, I like you feel it. To be feel powerful. I feel powerful. You yeah. know, yeah, I <laughs> cause people to pass out. It's yeah. Cool. No, that's, I'm joking. That's it's pretty awesome. I mean, what's what's that feeling like to know that? All of those people that came there to see you, and they know the words to all of your songs. Crazy. It's so crazy, dude. It's so weird. Like, it's just, like, surreal. Like, I don't, I don't really understand it. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, we get to the venue, like, early, kind, almost kind of in the morning, and they're the, waiting there from, like, sometimes the night before. Like, they're just, like, outside in the cold and the rain and the snow. Like, Norway, they were waiting overnight from, like, 3 a.m. in the snow. Like, it's just, like... It's crazy. I love it. It's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, the, you've obviously made a connection with them, which yeah. is in incredible. So let's go back to the beginning. Growing up, was there music in your household? When oh, you yeah. Were oh, yeah. You know, there was. Um, this is my brother, actually. And um, we write everything together. He produces all my stuff. We play together, tour together, you know. Um, and, like, my mom and dad are both here on tour with me. And that's, like, our whole family. So, right. you know, we, we grew up just with music as kind of, like, a, a natural thing. It wasn't, like... Oh, we all like music. We all do music. It's like it was like it was like really I don't know how to describe it and besides the fact that it was just completely normal and to meet kids that weren't around music all the time was weird to me. Really? You know, so <laughs> yes is the answer. Uh, was was there a, a particular artist or a song that you listened to growing up that you're like that's it. I have to do music because that just spoke to me. Mhm. Mm oh my god. I mean, I grew up on so many so many artists, but I feel like the moment Actually, I was like sitting on my bed and I was like 12 and I had already started writing music. I just did it no, for no reason. Kind of. It was kind of a random like I have a lot of things I need to say and I didn't know how to say them. Um, but I remember sitting on my bed when I was like 12 or 11 and just like surfing YouTube as you do. And there was this little video and it was called a, called Runaway by Aurora. And I had no idea who that was. I had no idea what the song was, but the thumbnail looked cool. So I clicked on it. I remember just sitting there and the intro played and I just was like, oh, that's what I want to do. And then it just like immediately I was just like in love with that whole idea. Uh, she's got a great voice too. She does. Beautiful. She's a sweetheart. That's awesome. Now, uh, Finn, you were in a band? When yeah, I was in a band in my teens, yeah. <laughs> now, how did that influence you, Billy, having a brother who was playing music and doing that kind of stuff? Um... Well, you can say no. <laughs> you can. <laughs> um, I mean, he. I think the thing that influenced me was that he wrote music, like, you know, because my big brother wrote music, and I was like, oh, I want to do that, you know. And like, my mom taught us both actually how to write songs, but you know, he's like my older brother, and I always thought what he did was cooler, so I wanted to do it too. Like, he got a phone first. He got, <laughs> he got the girlfriend and stuff, and I was like. It definitely, I think, makes her feel really grateful for uh, when we play shows and there's people there because I played a lot of shows with nobody at yeah. the shows in my right. teens. So yeah, yeah. Any I see a lot of perspective now. <laughs> any show with an audience, but he's like, "This is pretty cool." But Phineas's band was actually like really good. I just was so like envious and jealous, so I just never <laughs> noticed. <laughs> but um, no, since then it's just been like that's like my best friend, and we just do everything like together. So isn't that crazy? Yeah. Um, and then uh, that's actually really awesome that you can like that you have the whole family working together here. It's a, it's a special thing, actually, that you can share this together. It is. Um, so how did Ocean Eyes come about? Because I believe you kind of started it. He started it. 
But well, you I finished it. I did finish it. <laughs> Facts, I did. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, we had, this was like 2015, I think. Kind of like the beginning of that year, we had sort of just like decided. We were just like, why, why? We both write music. We live three feet away from each other. Why don't we just do this together? And so we did. And he, I remember we had, um, he had written this song and I recorded it and I was so bad. It was so, oh my God, it was so bad. It's still out somewhere, but it's fucking horrible. <laughs> but, and then, you know, we put it out on SoundCloud with like a download link and, and um, then I wrote this song and then I, I was like, can you produce it? And he made it and we like put that out and that was horrible. And then, <laughs> and then uh, sort of in like October, October in 2015, um, I was like, I grew up a dancer, so I was like dancing like hours and hours every week, whatever. And one of my dance teachers asked if there was like a song that I had written or Phineas had written that we could like use for a dance because dance is all about like new music and just like good music. And he didn't know that it was necessarily going to be good or horrible. It may have been just horrible. Right. But um, so Phineas had this song, Ocean Eyes, and it was kind of exactly what I was going through in a way, which was weird because he had written it before I even knew it existed. But then when he like played it for me, I was like, damn. Like it's weird how a song can just like be everything you're feeling without you even knowing. Um, and then we recorded it in like three days, two days maybe. No, I would say a couple weeks. We would do like vocals for like a whole night and then like that would be like one verse and then we'd go get vocals again because Billy is so particular and we'll do like a hundred takes a verse, which is awesome. But um, it definitely takes like some time sometimes for her to feel like she's done every possible you know variant yeah. that she wants to get out which is like the benefit of recording everything in your bedroom is you have an unlimited studio time budget which is great true um yeah but i was 13 and then we were just like recorded it and put it out like in the middle of the night on like a wednesday like on soundcloud on soundcloud with a free download link up and um somehow people liked it <laughs> and then just a few just a couple people <laughs> <laughs> yeah did that blow you away the response that it got when it I, th I thought it was because my like popular friend reposted it. I saw. I literally was like, "Oh, that's why," and then it just kept going. And then like, I, I it was weird. It was so weird. Like it just went completely over my head. And I was like 13. I didn't know this thing was like possible, and it just happened. And I was like, "Oh, weird." Strap in. Here we go. <laughs> Strap in. <laughs> <laughs> Want to play a song? Sure. Let's play a song. <laughs> Left 
my lover What an expensive fate My bees were in did I I thought that I'd feel better But now I got a bellyache Bellyache Maybe it's in the gutter Where I left my lover What an expensive fate Wow, that is, you, what an incredible voice! <laughs> uh, that sounds Thank you. so. I mean, it's like you hear it produced one way, but to hear it stripped down like that, it really is pretty special. Thanks, man. Um, Belly ache. Uh, your the lyrics are kind of dark to some of the stuff that you wrote. Hell yeah! I mean, like in that one, you b basically you b killed your friends. Facts. <laughs> uh, hot in hostage, you know, you're stealing souls, mm -hmm. keeping them in your box, mm -hmm. treasure chest. Uh, <laughs> where where does this stuff come from? Uh, I don't know, my guy. I don't know. Um, belly ache though, like that was crazy. Like we were just sitting in my garage, and we were just like. He as we just, do, just as hanging we, out in the <laughs> As we do. And we were just like playing random stuff. We were just like, you know, strumming and making up random melodies as you do to write a song. We, we didn't even mean to write a song. We just were like there and that was, it was happening. And um, we were just like riffing and Phineas was like sitting all alone, mouth full of gum, you know, in the driveway. And we were like, oh, that's kind of weird. That's kind of cool. That's kind of jiggy, you know. And then my friends aren't, he was like, my friends aren't far in the back of my car. Yeah, you definitely came up with that first line. That whole did I? Thing. Yeah. Okay, well, give credit to myself then. Damn. Yeah. Props. I think I did. Uh-huh. All the way through driving. Sitting all alone. Mouth full of gum. Okay, so I came up with the, f dude, see, the thing is that we, we write, forget, yeah. we forget because we write so 50-50 that we kind of both feel like we wrote the whole song because we, like, wrote it equally. You know, so it's like, I don't know. Anyway, anyway, uh, I wrote that first part. And then Phineas was like, my friends aren't far in the back of my car. Are there bodies? Like we're like driving around the town with our friends in the car. No, I was like, mm. I was like in the back of my car, lay their bodies. I just killed all of them. And then we were like, yo, and we like high fives and stuff. Twist. And then, <laughs> yeah. And then we just like, we just, it was, that was like when we knew we were like, oh, okay, this is what this shit is about. And we went when it was like he wrote this like amazing like like chorus. beginning of this chorus and i was just like oh like maybe like where's my where's it where's my mind yeah maybe it's in the gutter maybe it's in the gutter where i left my lover what an expensive fake my v is for vendetta i thought that i'd feel better <laughs> but now i got a belly ache so it's like yeah so I'm just like creepy shit belly ache was just like a hook i had written down for like a year just wanted to write a song called Bellyache and had to contextualize it. And I liked the sort of juxtaposition of Billy being at the time 14 when we were writing the song mm -hmm. and, uh, and sort of like the heaviness of I like also grew up being real. We both grew up really being guilty about stuff. So yeah. like all everything we do, we just get a bellyache because we were guilty. Yeah. Right. Like right. I used to steal stuff when I was like four. I would just like steal random things I saw and then I'd feel horrible. Stuff like pipe cleaners, not like, like a Maserati. Right. No. Like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that I mean, and like a big part of our writing process is we like to write, whether it be um, from our perspective or from nobody's perspective. Like it's you can write about anything; you don't have to go through it, you know. For sure. As long as you're not like lying, like some people are, they really talk about things they really have no idea about. But it's like it's different when you try to be a character, you know, when you put yourself in somebody else's shoes and write from their perspective. You know, I've I've like written a song from the perspective of somebody I hurt, you know, mentally. Right. So then. I saw it from a whole different point of view, and I was like, oh, like I, I saw how my actions actually were perceived in somebody else's mind, even though that's not really what it is, because that's not possible. But I did it in, a, in my own way, you know? That's, that's pretty cool, that's a, to be able to, to do that, to put yourself out there from like the other it. perspective. Yeah. Was one of the first songs you wrote after watching The Walking Dead? Hmm. <laughs> it was one of the ones I was just talking about, yeah. the horrible ones that we recorded before Ocean Eyes. Yeah, uh-huh, yep. When I was 12, yeah, I was 12, I, um, I, my mom was teaching me how to write songs, and she had this little, like, songwriting class, and I was in it, and the, the kind of, like, the 
I don't know, the, the assignment, I guess, was to watch a TV show or a movie and write down things in it that you thought would sound like a good like hook for a song or good lyrics. So I just watched like eight seasons of The Walking Dead <laughs> and I just wrote down a bunch of stuff and I wrote a song called Fingers Crossed about the zombie apocalypse. But nobody actually knows that's what it's about except when I tell them right. because it, it sounds more like a longing, unrequited love. You know, it sounds like a dying love but it's really about zombies and shit <laughs> that's crazy how about another song yeah okay i just woke up so this one might sound horrible it's like two octaves <laughs> I'm so excited for the, what the future is going to bring for you because <laughs> such incredible music. Thank you. Um, what has changed now that you're recognizable, you're on the street, uh, obviously you can't do the things that you used to do. How have you dealt with the fame that has come with your success? Uh, I, it's a weird. It's weird. It's really weird. Like, uh, you know, I don't know. I really don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> I don't even have an answer. I mean, like, I'm, I'm still figuring it out. It's something that you can't be trained for. It's nothing that's like you can be, you can expect any of it. You can't at all. And I can't really do anything I used to be able to do. Um, I mean, that was, this was the goal, right? So I guess it's okay. But I mean, it, it does get, it, it kind of sucks a little bit just cause like I can't go anywhere and I can't like be anywhere. Can't, I just can't. And that's, that's cool. Do people come up to you like a lot? 
when you're like at the airport or whatever. Oh yeah. 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 I mean, it's cool. It's like, I, I think it's like a beautiful thing. Cause it's like, it's just like people that just res people that respect what I do when I just do it. Cause I love it, you know, and I have no like intentions that are, that are, um, artificial, you know, right. I, I do it cause I want to do it. And if, if I didn't, I feel like I wouldn't, but I, I mean, here's the thing, like, with all of this there's obviously going to be like horrible 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 things about it but then there are also amazing things that i couldn't even that i i wouldn't be able to get otherwise you know and like the fact that i i got to do that show last night and meet all those people and just those kids that just like have just so much to say and and if you know if they can or can't say it i can be their voice for them you know i can be if if they don't have an outlet if they don't have a person if they don't have whatever i want to be that you know i want to be that person for them i want to be their voice if they don't know how to to say exactly what they feel and i kind of just want to make music that'll that'll make you kind of be like oh that's a, that's me right, like that's yeah. that's my song i think you've made that connection with people and i know that you care a lot about your fans and you do as much as you can to reach out to them and, and i do i really really do and that's like, really respectable Thank you. Um, I mean, I just, I just think it's natural. It, sh it shouldn't be like a different level of saying we're all on the same level. Like, that's what I don't like about like the whole paid meet and greet thing. Like, right. I know it's like it kind of has to be that way, but it's like I just, I would rather, you know, <clears throat> with like the people waiting outside. I just want to go and like be with them, like just hang out with them for like hours because it's just like fun. If if everybody put their phones away and just like would hang yes. out with me, then I would go. I would do it 100%. Yeah. It's just that, you know, everything is like I know. We know. live our lives through this little 2-inch screen on our phones. I know it's trash. It's, it's, it's trash, ridiculous. but no, I really really love I just love them. I don't even like calling them fans, man. They're like my family. It's like my friends. What's been the highlight so far? Mm. Of my life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, of of this this ride that's yeah. just begun. <sighs> um ah I mean, just getting the, the shows, all of them, like, it's just like, it makes everything rewarding. It's like a reward. Literally doing a show and meeting all those kids, like, that's rewarding for me. If I didn't get to do that, I wouldn't do any of this, you know? Right. Like, but that makes it all worth it. That makes me okay with, you know, doing all this stuff that whatever is not what I necessarily want to be doing, but that is what I want to be doing. I want to be making music and I want to be sharing my self, you know, with the world and let, let people use me in a good way, you know, not like, you know what I'm saying? Like totally. you can be used in a good totally. way. You can totally. let people use you as, you know, to try to be, I don't know. That's an a weird outlet. way of putting yeah. it. An outlet. And exactly. An outlet. Yeah. So what's the plans for the future A full length coming or uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We're working on it right now. Um, so you'll see. Yeah, because we could use some more music. Don't worry about it. You All right. How about another song? Yeah, let's do it. You want to hear Ocean Eyes or Copy Hair? What should we do? Oh, he said Ocean Eyes. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, let's go. <laughs>
So good, Thank so you. good. Emily is sitting in the best seat in the house thanks to Win Trust. What do you think, Emily? Pretty good? Yeah? yeah? Not too bad? Anybody could get these seats for future lounge sessions. Just listen for the keyword at 101 WKQX. And uh, maybe you could be sitting there for the next one. Uh, guys, it sounded so amazing. Thanks so much for spending some time with us today. Before I know you have to run off to Toronto, is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah? All right. So, but I love that you were able to come in. Your music is wonderful. This is just the start of many, many great things, and Thank hope you. to have you back. Thank you, man. Thank Billie you. Billie Eilish. Yay.